What's up everybody, Phil Mendoza again. As you can see, we got a little different kind of video today. I want to introduce you to Reese. This is my five month old Belgian Malinois. Reese is gonna be the newest member of, of our family, first of all, but secondly, the reason I picked her up was to train her as a game recovery dog. Um, I was initially gonna pr pursue picking up a lab for this type of, of work, but uh, not having the familiarity with breeders, bloodlines, as I did with the, this, uh, this specific dog, specifically this breed. Um, Reese comes from a, a bloodline, very good bloodlines to where a lot of her family members were working dogs for uh, the police force. So I guess a couple things, you know, why I decided to, to go this route with, with Reese um, you know, I was able to essentially have pick of the litter with Reese. She, um, and my pick of the litter to, and somebody else's pick of the litter, I guess, could be, could be totally different. But the breeder, being a family member of my wife's, <clears throat> gave us the opportunity to visit the puppies at five weeks old, six weeks old, seven weeks old, and interact with them. Um, what I did was the first few times that we went in there, I took a small piece of deer hide, and I just really wanted to play with the dogs, interact, and see their level of excitement, see which dog had a little higher prey drive. And from day one, Reese showed, um, I mean, all the puppies showed interest, but she showed a heightened level of interest. You know, there was one occasion I specifically remember where I, we were playing with the dogs and, and Reese was really uh, possessive over the hide towards the other puppies. Well, I got the hide from her, they were playing and I threw it, I just slid it across the ground into the corner and they played for a few more minutes. She came back put her nose to the ground and sniffed out and found the hide. Now granted it was only a few feet away, but that was specifically one of the qualities that I was looking for as this type of dog, like labs and like some of some other breeds that are very good air scent, uh, air scent dogs or wind scent dogs, um, they, they have a tendency to just, is just that, right? Their, their primary tendency is not to have their nose on the ground like a hound would be. They're really checking everything. And um, the breeder, being again a family member of my wife's, uh, having active canine dogs, um, he has narcotics dogs, bomb dogs, he even has a dog that, that's meant to, to uh, detent, detect bone fragments. Um, when him and I were talking about it, he just said, you know, when you're looking for a puppy, obviously play, prey drive is huge, but finding the dog that has a natural tendency to have their nose low to the ground because they're already going to be good with the air scent but if they if they have a natural tendency to really sniff stuff out of the ground then it's going to benefit fit me for what I was looking to do with her so anyway that's what we did we ended up picking up Reese and I've been running her on short tracks small tracks since she was eight weeks old um, I ended up picking up this book actually almost two years ago now. It's uh, Tracking Dogs for Finding Wounded Deer by John Giannini. And when I, was gonna, when I was going down the route to pick up a lab, I actually had the uh, mindset of I'm just going to go pick up a, a finished dog. Right? I'm going to go buy a dog that's trained in blood tracking. And the reason I actually started going down that route was because I, I'm going to go and put her down. Give me one sec. The reason I decided to go down that route with assuming I wanted to pick up a finished dog was A, I'm not a trainer. Uh, I don't know what it takes to, to, to train a dog for that. I've had dogs all my life, but other than obedience work and just, you know, different, training different dogs to interact with kids and at home, I didn't have any experience as a professional trainer. I still don't. Okay, so I want to be very clear with that. I'm not a, a professional trainer for, uh, from, this perspective at all. So talking with this trainer um, that I was initially looking to purchase a dog from, uh, she really took the time and, and gave me a little bit of background information, encouraged me to pick up this book, which I did, and she was explaining to me that the bond that a, uh, that a handler and the dog have is what really determines how good a dog can be for game recovery. And she was the first one to correct me when I would say blood tracking dog. There's actually many different scents that these animals use as clues, if you will, to detect this breadcrumb style trail 
to the end result, hopefully, being a recovered animal. So game recovery is a, is a proper term for what the type of training and the active use that, that I'm planning on using Reese for. But anyway, long story short, this woman really helped me explain, um, un, help me understand uh, the broader picture and what I was going to be looking at. And, you know, I, when I talk to people about what that really entailed, it's, it's like this. When I grew up as a rifle hunter, it was our normal tendencies to pick up our rifles a couple weeks before season, clean them out, go to the gun range, sight everything in, make sure everything's zeroed out, and then we'd be in the field a week and a half, two weeks later. So the, our, our rifles, our tools, if you will, were just used right before or for the application. And this dog, a, a game recovery dog, a good game recovery dog is not that. You need to be, you need to be working year round, very similar to what we do in archery and bow hunting, you know, practicing year round, uh, improving your craft, improving your form, improving your, your structure and your shot, your shot sequence. It's very much the same with the dog to where you have to be putting them in different conditions, different terrain, uh, different types of tracks and working them regularly so that way they're proficient in at least those training style tracks. So in, once you do get into the field with a live track, then um, they're that much more prepared for it. There's no guarantee that a dog's going to be good at finding a, a live animal if they're good at, at you know, doing a game recovery training, if you will. And just the same, my intention is not to take Reese to do com competition style uh, certifications. At this point, my, my primary focus was to have Reese as a tool that I had to selfishly help me in the field in the event that things didn't go perfect, right, for that insurance factor to help me hopefully recover that animal. Um, and I'll tell you that this all stemmed from a couple years ago, I was out hunting in Nebraska and I put an arrow in a, in a buck that was, it was about 45 yards out of a tree stand. The, the deer was slightly quartering away and I hit it a touch back, but it was, I believe it was a liver into one lung hit is what I felt that the shot looked like and the blood when I actually uh, did fall of blood on the ground is what is what the indicators were to me that the type of hit was. So the mistake I made was about 45 minutes after the shot, starting to get a little bit dark, I went down to the spot where the deer had stood when I shot and looked around there a little bit, didn't find any blood, so I proceeded down the trail where the deer ran out for about another 30 yards and that's where I started to see blood. And the blood appeared to be that of a liver type blood. Um, again, no exit hole. It was just the entrance hole. So it wasn't a lot of blood, but it was decent blood. And I followed it for 35, 40 yards. Very cautious, going very slow. I wasn't, my intention was not to follow that blood track out. I just wanted to get some initial sign to see what it looked like. So, uh, you know, going those 35, 40 yards, I felt the wind kind of hit me in the back of the neck. And it's that, you know, that story you hear all the time, right? You blow the animals out. Well, there happened to be animals in the timber not far from where I was as I was tracking this animal. And I believe the buck that I had hit was with those animals or in that area because as soon as I feel that wind shift and hit me in the back of the neck, I had a couple deer blow at me in the woods. They were 60 to 80 yards away. I couldn't see them. And they blew out, and I just hear the, the crashing through the timber. So I backed out you know, got all my stuff put away, come back in, headlamp, and I started to pick up the blood trail about an hour and a half later. Followed the blood trail for about 80 to 100 yards, went down a hill, came back up a hill, and where I lost blood is where I believe the buck was when those other deer blew out, when that wind shifted in their direction. And I made a mistake. You know, I shouldn't have got onto that blood trail that quickly. So the next day I came back in, had a couple of guys help me, we scanned the area, we circled, we combed, I would believe, I'd say about a good half a mile to a little touch bigger than half a mile. We just circled it and gritted it out and did, were very thorough. Did not find any more sign that we can see, that, that, it, that a, our human eye could identify. We followed different game trails that went out. We went in different areas and then we even circled one more time a little bit further out 
just not as tight of a grid, and never found any other sign for that animal. That's when my actually my first phone call to someone to bring in a blood a blood tracking dog again at the at that time was my term to see if I can get the help for that, and I didn't have anybody that would was able to come in and help me. So end result was I lost that animal. I do believe that that was a uh, that that animal did die. It's just unfortunately my decisions and my mistakes led to me not recovering that animal. So that's what started it all. Um, you know, as a bow hunter, I feel like I prepare better than most. I, I, I shoot all year. I pay a lot of attention to my, my tools. I'm very proficient with everything. I f have a very good understanding of my effective range, my energy, and I still make mistakes. Okay? That plus having two young boys, one, uh, my son's 10 now. He's going to be able to hunt with me this fall. My youngest son is, is only five, but sooner than later, they're going to be hunting with me. And as a, just having another tool in our tool belt, just like we do as bow hunters with other things, I felt that this was going to be a good asset to have and to spend the time, invest the time into training the dog. So again, these videos that I'm going to be working on this video series are not how to, okay? Some of these videos may be how not to, because I'll tell you that I've ran Reese on tracks four to five tracks a week since she's been eight weeks old. Now some of those were 25 to 40 yard tracks, very short tracks. Uh, we're up to 150, 175 yard tracks now with um, about an hour delay. So early on it just started with a 10 to 15 minute delay on a short track. And then we progressed into longer tracks and I started to introduce the turns and, and now I'm at a little bit longer delay in time. So. Again, these are all things that I've primarily picked up from, from the, the Tracking Dog for Finding wound, Wounded Deer book, as well as uh, Gun Dog has some really good material out there, um, and l relying on resources like my wife's family member that is a canine officer, as well as some other books that I've picked up along the way. So excited about this process, excited about where Reese goes. Um, me learning as well from the standpoint of what I need to be doing to understand her behavior changes, mannerisms while she's on a track. Because that's what really is going to, um, what I'm reading and what I'm told, be the, the best outcome for, uh, and results with, with, this, with having a game recovery dog. So once again, Reese, five month old at this point, Belgian Malinois, she should be in that 60, 65 pound range as a full grown adult. Um, the, two, a couple more points before I finish on the video, I guess. Initially I was looking at a lab. There's a lot of hounds out there that are great for, for this type of work. I was looking for an animal that um, if I as a trainer fail or if I as a trainer don't T teach this dog to uh, properly to get her to where I would like her to be. We have a German Shepherd. Uh, I've had labs. Uh, I've had some, um, a few other breeds, but having a, a Belgian Malinois was as a fail safe, if you will. I knew that I was going to have a dog that was going to be poten potentially a very good personal protection breed, just like my German Shepherd is. And so for that respect, I was comfortable and, and excited to go down this path with this specific breed. She also, from an endurance standpoint and stamina, there's not too many dogs that stack up with that breed. Obviously that's where the, so many military and canine officers use this, this breed uh, for, their, for their active working dogs. Um, you know, being in the mountains of Colorado, you know, you, there's going to be situations where we may be hiking long miles up and down in elevation and basically harder miles hiked than what most of the experiences and, and the work in this type of book. The, the, the book and the experiences are great that they talk about, but they're primarily Midwest and Eastern whitetail style hunts to where you got dense, more dense timber and not as much distance potentially in terrain. But, um, and I'm not knocking this at all. I'm just saying where I live, Colorado, I want it a breed of dog that was going to be very capable to hopefully help me with what I was looking to do as well as handle the terrain 
I still plan on hunting whitetail in Kansas and Nebraska um, and having Reese close if I need her for uh, on a potential shot that, that I, I take or one of my friends or family members take on an animal. But she basically checked off a lot of the boxes for the specific application that I was looking for. And it's just something that I do with anything else when I'm looking at building a different arrow or going to a different bow. I really want to make sure that there's enough boxes checked because there's no, there's no perfect scenario for anything. There's no perfect fit for every one. But if you know what you're looking for, at least I think I know what I'm looking for at this point because I'm still green to the situation, but understanding the terrain, understanding the country, understanding um, what might come about, understanding uh, what the species and everything else, you know, not to mention being in, in, the, in the West, you know, mountain lion, potentially wolves if, if they're, you know, we start to encounter that. I wanted a dog that was going to be versatile, not going to be um, something that was going to be a liability, really, if I was in the woods. I, I just wanted to know that this is one of the healthier breeds that you can, that, that, that you can get really out there. And um, so, like I said, a lot of the boxes were checked. Very excited to go down this path. The next few videos that I put out on this, uh, this topic, and any of the videos that you see Game Recovery Dog or Reese the Game Recovery Dog are going to be on this subject, whether it's going to be a, a review on some of the material, uh, an update on how she's doing. Uh, here, probably the third video I put up is going to be a track that, she, that I recorded that she did when she was about four months old. Just started inter, to introduce some 90 degree turns, and she made some mistakes, you know, but it, I, I videotaped a few of them, so I'm going to start showing you as I've been learning and some of the process and some of her strengths and like I said some of the mistakes that she's been making and how we're trying to get past those. So thanks again for checking out this video and the videos that follow if you like the you know the game recovery dog series or topic. We have some other videos we're also excited that are going to be coming forward so stay tuned and we'll see you guys soon.